I'm Shanna, a Canadian medical student. Every Wednesday and Friday, I release interviews with different med students and physicians, advice videos, and videos based on viewer comments. Subscribe to not miss a chance to learn how to be the most productive and stress-free med student or applicant you can be. Let's thrive, not just survive in medicine together. Today's video, we compare medical school in Canada versus in New Zealand. As I interview a fellow YouTuber who is a medical student in New Zealand, thank you to the Ongwe for volunteering his time to talk to us. Check out his channel. So I'm second year at the University of Auckland in New Zealand. And I'm at the University of British Columbia. I'm jealous of your accent. I want a cool accent too. <laughs> well, your accent's so cool. It's like <laughs> on the movies. Most common is high school. Then we do undergrad for four to five years. Um, and then most people, a lot of people will study something like biomedical sciences, biology, a biochemistry degree, uh, microbiology degree whatever, neuroscience, whatever, that kind of thing. And then, um, and then apply to med school after fourth years. Um, now it's, I feel like it's now even more common for people to go on, uh, graduate, do something else for a couple of years, work, get a master's degree. Um, but yeah, I would say that's probably the most common thing. And then med school is four years. So the first two years are preclinical, a lot of just lecture stuff. Uh, it, is lecture, it is clinical content though, I think, which is different from some places. Um, so we do, it's like patient cases. So some stuff about cardiology, some stuff about infections, antibiotics, all that in a good way. And our school's a little bit odd, I guess, in comparison to some schools in the States or Canada. And so they're trying a new curriculum called the spiral curriculum. It's super confusing, but basically each week, say, I think our first week was like stroke week or something. So you learn everything about stroke. You learn about the anatomy uh, related to it. You learn the presentation, how to treat it, yada, yada. And the next week will be like diabetes. Um, and then the next week after that, it will be like lung cancer. And then, so what they'll do is like a few months later, they'll bring it back to neurology, but instead of stroke, it's like Parkinson's. And then a couple months later, it's like dementia so that you keep getting a bit of neuro and then you keep getting a bit of respiratory. Um, and the idea is that instead of learning just like cardiology all at once, and then you forget it all, that it keeps you fresh. Yeah. Then we do residency average year, average is like five years, but could be two years, could be seven years, and then fellowships. So that's the overview of the path. So how are your exams assessed right now? Is it like you do a block and then it's a test or is it like end of year? Yeah, it would be like the end of the semester, or sorry, mid-semester right. and then end of semester, which is just like- every In New Zealand, it's quite different. The high school, then some people go through the undergrad way, Mm -hmm. So then we do one year of either biomed or health side. And then like we are ranked based on that first year. Mm -hmm. And then the top, whatever amount of people get into med school. And that's the pathway I'm at. And then there's other people who do a degree first and then enter through a postgrad pathway mm -hmm. and then enter med school that way. And then medical school is six years total. If you include that first, like first year that, mm -hmm last year so then five more years and then the two years of that are pre-clinical and then the last three are clinical so it's six years total mm -hmm. and then after that you do housemanship which is like your intern year mm -hmm. for two years and then registrar which is like a junior doctor still for a few more years and then your fellowship so i guess it sounds about the same in terms of total years Maybe our course is shorter because we can go through undergrad. Which one's more common to go from undergrad to the one year like you did? Or is it more common to do the, the graduate path? Pretty split, but maybe mm. slightly more undergrad. I'm not too sure. All the 11 systems and we just like chunk it. So like right now it's just digestive. An average week, like how does that look like? Say you're on a musculo week. There will be lectures. On muscular, obviously. And then we have cadaver labs, which I'm sure you guys would have too. Mm -hmm. And then we have other labs. And it's really like a lot of stuff at once. So we have like four or five like papers sort of running. So it's like, say, muscular. And then we also have principles of medicine running during that time. And mm -hmm. then also professional and clinical skills, which is like mindfulness, ethics, all that. And everything runs simultaneously so we have quite a lot of stuff and we just have to follow a timetable pretty much mm -hmm. adjustments how would that work for you normally how would you learn to do like history taking and stuff if this wasn't in lockdown 
so we'd like split up into small groups and then yeah practice in like a clinical room sort of mm-hmm. how about you guys yeah so we so i think we do similar too it's like groups of six and then um usually there's like a physician tutor that's you know a specialist in whatever field that is or a generalist at the beginning i think the first year we just had generalists like general internists uh hospitalists or whatever and then they they would show us how to do it and then we'd have volunteer patients which i thought was super cool so they have some sort of pathology and then we like listen and stuff um and then more in second year now what we did more is like it's like a specialist so like say for msk there was a um like an msk more specialty type person to teach us that which is pretty cool and we do have um that's really popular in canada i don't think it's caught on the states as much but we started doing this thing called like case-based learning i don't know if you guys have that um on the so in first year i think it was three days a week so on monday wednesday and friday and then second year just two days a week but like we start with like some kind of case and then you're supposed to like read and prepare everything um and then come in and usually it's like you kind of the first day usually everyone's talking about the differential diagnosis what kind of investigations we want to run and then and then as you like suggest those then you like scroll down the case and then they like pop it up you're like oh we want labs and then the labs pop up oh we want an x-ray x-ray pops up the next day we do it then it's like what kind of treatments do you want and about like being like a house register and stuff is that when you start specializing say if you wanted to do surgery or whatever is that when you choose or is that a general still on oh, no, nah, it's um house offices years are still like your intern years, mm-hmm. so you're still just following a physician around. You're 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 a doctor, but you're still not a proper qualified doctor. Mm-hmm. Chip is when you decide to pick like yeah, yeah. that you want to do whatever cardiology or whatever, then you do that. Yeah, that's pretty cool. So it's kind of a little bit kind of different. So like for us, the five years, it's like. If I just want to do dermatology or whatever, then I just do five years of dermatology. Um, but some years, some programs like internal, it sounds like more like you guys. So I think their five years is just general internal. And then say like uh, you want to do cardiology or rheumatology, then you go on to the fellowship. So I think the internal med path is still very similar. My parents. I'm filming a picture right now. Thank you. Sweet. So how, do you, how did you get into med school? I did three years of undergrad. Um, so I studied neuroscience and pharmacology. And then in my second year, I took the MCAT. Um, I think you guys have like UCAT equivalent, which is equivalent, I guess. But ours was like MCAT is more just like science focused. So all, like, basically testing the first two years of knowledge, like all about chemistry, physics, and then some like English. And then, yeah, then then applied and then, you know, do the whole interviews and stuff. And then there we are. A year later, you get an end of a med school. So the MCAT is like a standardized test that like everyone in America and Canada does. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. So, so for us, we don't really have uh, like a standard test. Our one, the way we get in is for undergrad is completely based on first year papers, which are run by the university. Mm-hmm. So yeah. And the UK is just a, a standard test, but that, that's only a small proportion of what they look at for deciding whether you go into med school or not. Okay. So, yeah, UCAT was 30% of what they judge. And then we also had an interview. I'm not sure if you guys did. We do an MMI. Mm-hmm. That's cute. Yeah, did. So, so you said for the, the way they kind of judge who to admit. So 30% was um, UCAT and then the first year papers, which it's, it sounds like was it an exam that you did in first year or your grades in first year or yeah yeah grades in first year so we had like four core papers and then that's averaged and then they look at that mm-hmm. so the biggest most important thing really was the grades in first year yeah, yeah. And, and then what were the core four things that most people take in auckland it's bio sci which is like all the small stuff microanatomy mm-hmm. and then pop health population health um chemistry and med sci which is like medicine but scaled down a lot and then, and then the interview and then was there anything else that they look at mm, no that's pretty much it so yeah you, you just have to do really well first year for new zealand if you want to get in through the undergrad path oh in terms of applying for um, high school to to start that first year did you have to do any was it difficult to like get in to like to the first year 
you have to meet some requirements, but I don't think those requirements were that hard. Do a lot of people go on to progress to med school or like what happens to people who grades are not good enough? If you don't get into med school, you got you can apply to other programs like ophthalmology, pharmacy, or you can complete a degree and then enter through postgrad as well. So you can yeah, a lot of people do that. And usually the postgrad students in our course know a lot more than the undergrads. So I guess it sounds like you guys end up actually taking the same class. So for example, for you, you would just go right away. But there are some people that are in your year that did go through the postgrad route and you're all taking the same classes now. Yeah. Ed. Uh, are you guys all postgrad at your uni? Yeah, then we're all postgrad. I think that's for all of Canada, they will be postgrad. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, actually, that's not true. There's a cup. There's a few special programs, but they only take like I think twelve people they go straight from high school, and it's like six years. So I think it's like model, but they're probably like the minority <laughs> in terms of people going to med school. Your application process and ours is um like extracurriculars is a really big factor in terms of applying to I guess applying to get into uni, and then after uni, applying to get into like post grad medicine is like um I think fifty. The first stage is like fifty percent academics and mostly like, how you did in your um, your three or four years in school and then um, the other 50 percent is like what kind of research did you do what kind of volunteering and leadership and um, that kind of stuff now that you're in medical school are you required to do more leadership or research so I guess I'm asking that because uh, at least in Canada that a lot of the people are we're like a lot of us are still trying to do a lot of research on the side uh, a lot of leadership a lot of volunteering and that's because when we're applying after our studies then we're trying to get to residency and internship um that they this is something that still matters you still have to have all these uh, research and all these um activities and stuff and um those kind of things and so that's something that is i find difficult i would say about medical school in terms of um you're trying to learn the content and then you're also trying to balance all these other things that you want to do on the side and as well as like interesting things you want to do like youtube or hobbies and um, stuff like that yeah that sounds really hard to like focus on med school and focus on outside stuff that does affect your career. In New Zealand, I don't think many people are doing that. Mm -hmm. You can take an honours year in med school where you just take a break and focus on just research. But mm -hmm. I mean, I think that might help your CV, but I don't think in the grand scheme of things, we have to do that. Mm -hmm. So people do so, it if they want to, but it's not common to. It's yeah. So in our spare time, I guess a lot of us just do our hobbies or study, I guess. Mm -hmm. What's an average week like? Like how much class do you guys go to? How much studying are you expected to do? To Typical week? week would be three lectures in the morning, mm -hmm. maybe some lab or something on in the afternoon that may last two to three hours. Mm -hmm. So that throughout a week. And then some days, maybe like Wednesdays, I think we're pretty chill. So maybe only one class on. So there's quite a bit of contact hours. And and then outside there, I guess we spend a lot of time studying, I guess. Mm, yeah, a lot of content in mid-school, which I didn't expect, to be honest. Yeah, just studying maybe four hours three hours outside that so it's a pretty full-on day how about you is that like similar to you guys yeah it sounds pretty similar I guess my school is very actually I, that comes to mind because I was talking to a medical student because she was saying like am I doing something wrong all I do every day is go to class and study and pretty much there's that's the end of the day um, and I said no I think you're doing it right and I would say most medical students that's pretty much how life is I think it's really hard when we compare ourselves to the exceptions, the ones who manage to only need to study one hour, maybe a day, and like, you know, ace all the tests and stuff. But I think most people have to put in that three or four hours to understand and how often you guys had exams. Like some topics have exams at the middle of the year and at the end of the year. Some of it have some topics. We have exams at the end of that topic. So like when we do digestive and musculo, at the end of that topic, we do a muscular test. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so either at the end of the topic or half, the, half at the middle of the year or at the end of the year. Okay. How long would a, a topic last? Would that be like a few months, a few weeks? Yeah, yeah, a couple months, I'd say. That's pretty much 
the cool comparison part. So I guess now this is just more chill. What surprised you about med school when you started? What, you know, what do you, what do you kind of wish you knew? Um, Thanks so much for watching. Hit the like button and subscribe if you want to see more videos every Wednesday and Friday. This has been Shanna. Let's thrive, not just survive med school together. Bye!